so um, the agenda, very similar to past weeks. I just, I wanted to add something at the end here. So I want to start uh, with a couple of jokes, which are both terrible and fantastic. Uh, really quickly discuss grades and assignments, because I think most people are clear on that at this point. However, I'm willing to answer questions. Uh, I want to talk to you about the student end of the year conferences, these closer conversa conversations. And I wanted to talk with you about guidelines for talking about race, because as I'm sure you are fully aware, a lot has been happening. And I thought um, you might appreciate a short discussion about how to talk to people about what's going on in a way that's productive for both you and the person and people that you're speaking with. So um, we're gonna talk mostly about this class, but we cannot pretend that there are not other bigger things going on uh, around us right now. So that's our agenda. Let's start with some jokes. Um, I just chose two real quick. So um, the first joke is about Pokemon. This is Jigglypuff, who is clearly the greatest Pokemon. It has a really cute little song that puts you to sleep, which is also really cute. But here's the joke. I overheard this guy whispering Pokemon jokes to a friend, but I couldn't catch them all. Yep, that's terrible. It's a Pokemon joke. Um, this is a fuzzy Chewbacca from the movie Star Wars, and this is the Millennium Falcon. So another joke, it's context heavy, I guess. So did you know that Chewbacca crashed the Millennium Falcon the first time he flew it? <sighs> Wookie mistake, Wookie mistake. Okay, so those are my bad jokes. Uh, let's talk about grades and assignments. So um, everything's due tomorrow. Uh, I tried to talk to the admins about extensions, but they're trying to keep it as straightforward as possible. So essentially, this is my understanding. Um, if you want it graded, if you want the work to be a part of your grade, I've got to have it by tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure what it means to turn things in after tomorrow. Somehow I accept it, but I'm not allowed to grade it. I'm not really sure what that means, uh, but I think their intent is to finish all grading work by tomorrow. So. I'll accept anything at any point tomorrow, and then I'll use the weekend to enter in all the grades. And then after that point, if you're still missing things or need support in finishing, I could work with you, but just realize at that point, it's no longer uh, going to impact your grade. It's more for completion. That's my understanding. Um, and I don't know how that would factor in for the year. If that means you have to take a pass or fail, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna verify that. Uh, but the idea is basically, again, if you want to turn something in and get a grade for the year, just get it in by tomorrow. Um, these student conferences and closer com closure conversations I'm kind of excited about because the, I think the idea is that it would be really nice to have an end to the year. Time feels bizarre at this point, probably for many of you, like it does for myself. Things feel as if they're moving both fast and slow. And... Um, for many, many of you, you might have lost the rhythm to your life. So the idea is to add some of that back by saying, let's end the year and let's have a process around that. Um, this is for you and your family. So anyone that's your guardian or family that you want to attend, they can do that. Um, we want to give you some closure. That's both for myself and for you. It's really hard that we randomly could no longer see each other and that there's randomly all the routines of our life might be suddenly gone. So we wanna add, give some closure to this process. Um, and during these conferences, I could talk to you about your grade and if there are actions to improve for you as a student, I'll talk about that. So we'll talk about your successes and things you might wanna improve upon. Um, if you have questions about your grades or guidance, I'll offer that during that time. So I'll give you that one-on-one -on -one feedback. And also this, these, these conferences and conversations are also super useful to myself, our department, and our school. I am sure that you have lots of ideas about how this could be done better, how distance learning can be done better. Um, and in these conferences, uh, I'm looking for that feedback. I don't, I don't, I don't need a hundred things that I can improve because I'm sure there are at least a hundred things I could improve. But think about something. Um, that I, I can work on for next year, assuming there is at least some element of distance learning involved. 
it might we don't know what's going to happen exactly but i'd like to hear from you what your thoughts are and um the way to sign up for these some of you have already done this i put a link on classroom and when you click the link to pick a time for a conference you'll see this messy looking calendar and all of these gray slots here are just open slots for you to pick so what i did was i opened up conferences starting on Sunday, on the weekend, if that works for you, all the way through Tuesday the 16th. I'm just asking that you pick a slot. And when you click on one of these, these are all open slots right now, um, you'll get this window that says book an appointment. Where is it going to be? It's going to be online or by phone. Try to specify what you prefer. I prefer talking on the phone, but it would be nice to see your faces. So in the description, just let me know if you prefer a Google Meet or if you prefer me to call you. And if someone is attending with you, who would that be? Uh, you're, if, you're, if someone in your family wants to attend, they are welcome. Um, I obviously welcome your guardians to attend. However, I also understand that your guardians might have, let's say, three children, each with eight classes, and they might not want to go to 24 meetings. So I won't be insulted if people don't want to go, I understand. Um, this is not, it's not exactly clear um, if I'm allowed to tell you this is mandatory or not, but I can tell you that these, these appointments have no bearing on your grade whatsoever. Um, so if, it's a, if, if this is a hardship for you to attend, just let me know what's going on so that I don't see that you're missing and try and find out uh, what's going on. Like if, so if you can't make it or you, if this is too much for you for whatever reason, just let me know. Um, so before we talk about conversations around race and a little bit about everything you probably have been seeing this week or maybe you've tuned out, um, before we talk about that, are there any questions for me? Okay. Um, so I initially, there, there's so much going on this week and um, if you don't know what's going on, essentially I'm referring specifically to the protests um, around the death of George Floyd. and this week, so many things have been unfolding and you probably had conversations with either friends or family. Um, and some of you might have been a part of these protests. And initially I wanted to open it up and talk to you about all that's been going on. But I recognize that uh, it's difficult to have this conversation with the whole group on Zoom as a final meeting for the year, just to throw it at you like that without any preparation. Um, so that being said, I am happy to facilitate or host any conversations you wish to have, and I can invite other people. If you just feel like you need people to talk to about all the things you're seeing and you wanna hear other people's voices, I'm happy to facilitate that, but I would invite you to that um, so that you come prepared with that mindset because all of our meetings so far have been just me telling goofy jokes and just kind of routine things about the class. So if you wanna have a conversation about about race and all the things you're seeing, I'm happy to set that up. Seriously, that would be, I think, very meaningful. Um, but what I wanted to do is, uh, I wanted to make sure you have some guidance on how to talk about race and all the things that are going on in a meaningful way. I feel like so much of our society is polarized right now. And it's my belief that the only hope to getting us back together is through communication. So I wanted to give you some of the like tried and true guidelines for communicating about, about race. So this framework for these discussions, they, it pretty much works, I should say. Nothing is guaranteed. But if you want to talk to somebody, whether it's a family member or a friend or someone um, anywhere who has very differing, differing views than you or you just want to talk to somebody and see what they think, this framework can help you talk without the conversation becoming um, both explosive, confrontational, and meaningless. I will share the document that I got all of this from. And the document you should know is written for educators to speak about race in the classroom, but you could certainly apply it in any context. So what are the guidelines? Um, first of all, and maybe this is obvious, you have to respect the preferences and honor experiences of the person that you are speaking with. What does that mean? Um, well, that means if, they, if someone tells you that they have experienced racism or sexism or some form of discrimination, that means you have to honor that and respect that, right? 
like this quote says, the ultimate authority on a person's identity and experience belongs to that person. So you have to be willing to listen and respect what they are saying, right? Acknowledge it as true. Um, and essentially you're honoring their, their lived experiences. We all have such different experiences and we have to be willing to honor that, right? What else is important? You have to acknowledge bias and privilege. That's your own privilege, your own bias, and perhaps the most common type of bias that you want to be aware of is implicit bias. Implicit bias is a thought processes that happen without you knowing it. In the document I'm going to share, some of you might have done this, there's a famous Harvard study on implicit bias, implicit bias about race, implicit bias about sex and gender. It's a really fascinating thing to go through. Um, only do the study though, if you're willing to think about that, right? It's difficult to face your own bias, but the idea with implicit bias, it's not racism per se. It, the idea is that you, without knowing it, will associate certain, certain things together. For example, if I say, if I say peanut butter, if I say peanut butter, you might be thinking jelly. That's an automatic response, right? That's an implicit bias. And I just want to show you a two minute clip that explains implicit bias, because if you're going to talk about race, you've got to be aware of your own implicit bias, right? So here's the idea. You should have sound. This is a video about uh, implicit bias. Let me just press play. Can you guys hear that? Can you give me a thumbs up? No. Okay. That's uh, sorry about that. I will. I'll share this video. They talk about implicit bias and how we all have it. And if you are curious what type of implicit bias you might have in a certain area, look at the link that I send out. The document inside there. There's a link to measuring your own implicit bias, um, and you, you have to be aware of that in a conversation. There are so many moments. Um, during all these protests, and there's so much, so much emotion and so many difficult things to see, so many powerful images like this one right here, where you've got this unarmed woman protester standing her ground, and all these police officers also standing there, and they're, they're really um, geared up, right, in riot gear. And you see all these things, and then you, you wanna talk about it. So what else can you do to talk about all the things you're seeing? And one of the things is to own your learning, this guidance is basically saying um, you have to be open to learning something new in these conversations. When you walk into it, know that you're going to learn something and then follow up. If you're willing to do that, it could be a successful conversation. Um, another thing that most people aren't aware of, if you're talking about race or any difficult conversation, you have to communicate your positive intentions. It's not assumed. So if, if I'm talking to you about race, you might not understand where I'm coming from, right? I should tell you what my intention is. I should tell you my respect for you as a person and that I'm trying to treat you with care. Sometimes you have to say that because if you don't communicate your intentions, people aren't exactly sure what your motivation is. What else? Please avoid assumptions, right? This is something I've struggled with and many people struggle with. It's part of implicit bias. Um, don't take an anecdotal story and apply it to everyone. That's going to get the conversation nowhere. Other guidelines. This one, many people aren't aware of, right? You have to reject colorblindness. And if you're going to talk about race with someone, don't pretend that you don't see color. Don't pretend that you don't see how someone is different. Instead, acknowledge and celebrate the differences. We are all different from each other, and that's OK. So if you want to talk to someone about race, don't pretend that you don't see these things. We do, we all see it, right? You also wanna consider the context of the conversation you are, ha you are having, right? Where are you in the social and historical context as an individual in the conversation you are having? So for example, I'm aware as a white male, I am in the majority. It doesn't mean I can't talk to you, but I understand that that is part of who I am. And that when I talk to you about race, you might see me in that way, right? 
You have to really acknowledge that. What else? A couple more things. And this is not a formula for talking, but it's the hope that we can talk about things that are really difficult, even with people that you might think are on the other aisle, on the other side of the aisle, right? Don't, don't be afraid to talk about these difficult things. Don't be afraid, right? It's difficult. Concepts of race, culture, and identity are complex and deeply personal. They often bring feelings of different discomfort. So I encourage you to discuss these things with other people, right? It's going to be hard, right? It's going to be uncomfortable. And that's something, it's very clear to me with all that's going on that we have to, we have to do this more often. We have to talk to each other and be okay with that discomfort. All right, last two things. If you want to talk to someone about race, you have to be open to being wrong. Um, there are many weaknesses that I have, but I, I feel like this is important. If you want to become strong in talking about difficult conversations, you have to know that you are often wrong, right? If you approach your conversation with a person, don't think you're going to approach them and persuade them or convince them of something. Instead, the goal of the conversation should be learning and understanding. That, that might be, in my opinion, probably the most important thing to keep in the back of your mind. And if you're talking to someone else about all that's going on, you might mention that. The goal is to learn from each other. That's the goal. And to understand each other, not to persuade or convince. Right? So there are so many things going on. And I just want to reiterate that I'm here to talk with you about anything you need to discuss. So let me end this presentation and say thank you, everyone. Um, I look forward to seeing you in our conferences. And I am available if you have any questions. All right? So you can go if you'd like or stay behind if you'd like to say anything or ask any questions. All right, thank you everyone.